Do you feel like you're not making enough money to be able to save any? Well, in this episode, I'm going to give you three steps to help you get started right now. And if you'd like a bunch more tips to help you make the most of your finances and really put your money to work for you and also transform the way you think and feel about money, make sure you click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Now, a number of years ago, I was going through what I call my broke single mum phase, and I did not have two cents to rub together. Honestly, I was so freaking broke that one year my income was less than my rent. Still don't quite know how that all worked out, but it did in the end. But the thing is that even amongst all of that, I managed to start saving money because I implemented the things I'm going to be sharing with you in this episode. And by just starting to save a little bit of money, what it actually did and what it will do for you as well is it starts the flow. It starts you focusing on the direction you want to go. And then that gathers momentum. And before you know it, you'll be ticking off all those things on your financial goals list, like buying your dream house, tick, did that, bought an investment property, bought another one, started taking the kids on awesome overseas holidays, tick, 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 tick. All the things that I used to dream about started coming true and it all happened a lot faster than I thought it ever would because I just dared to get started and I let the momentum kick in and start to gather. So that's what this is all about. It's about getting started. So let's talk about how to do that. Now, if you feel like money is scarce, which is why I gather you're watching this particular episode, then a business or a side hustle is a really great idea because it gives you the opportunity to bring in that additional income. But the very first step you want to take to help you start saving money is to ensure that you actually separate that business money from that personal money. So make sure you do that first. And what that's going to help you do is to ensure that you actually start recognizing and celebrating and seeing when your business is able to pay you and when you are generating personal income out of your business. It also allows you to actually start saving money because you know this is money that my business has paid me and that's money that my business needs to be able to continue to operate so it can continue to grow and generate more and more income that then flows through to my personal finances where I save up to achieve those financial goals of mine. Now, this next one is so very important because not only does it help you organize your money better and start that process of saving so that you can gather momentum on that, it also helps you become more magnetic to money and start to gather momentum on that. And that's really cool because as you become more and more magnetic to money and attract more and more in, it makes the process of saving money accelerate as well, of course. And this is to simply separate what is discretionary spending versus what is fixed expenses. Now, what's the difference between the two? Discretionary spending is money that you choose to spend. You can choose to spend it today, tomorrow, not at all. And you also get to choose usually how much you spend. So I'm talking about things like getting a haircut. I could get a haircut today. I could get a haircut next week. I could get a haircut next month or next year. I can go to an expensive hairdresser or I can go to a much more affordable hairdresser. So that's a discretionary expense. I choose when and I choose how much. And then we have what we call fixed expenses. And they're really things that you're going to need to spend some money on. Your rent, your electricity, your mobile phone account, your internet, your insurance, all those kinds of things. But Make no mistake, just because we call them fixed expenses doesn't mean the amount you spend on them is fixed either. And in fact, I really highly recommend that you review how much they're costing you and shop around for some better deals because I have the students in my Magnetic Money program do that as part of the process that we go through. And they all save literally thousands of dollars each and every year just by reviewing those so-called fixed expenses. Because the truth is that we tend to forget about them and not review them. And a lot of the time we're spending way more money than we need to be. So that's your money waiting to be reclaimed so it can start being put towards those savings that you're wanting to accumulate. Now, I just want to quickly show you what this looks like in terms of 
the magnetic money planner and how we like to lay it all out. So we've got what we call the cash bucket, which is all your discretionary spending. It's all the money that you can choose to spend if you wish. And, you know, we have things like spending money, alcohol, entertainment, cleaning, haircuts, all those sorts of things, and many, many more. And so everything in that cash bucket is discretionary spending. You can choose to spend it today or next month, and you can choose how much you spend on it. And then we have fixed expenses, which usually live in what we call the bills bucket. And you can see here, it's all of those things, rent, groceries, electricity, water, council rates, um, you know, phone, insurances, cars, service and registration, and so on. And so we separate those two out. And the reason we do that, besides, you know, what I talked about earlier is Number one, it helps us ensure there's plenty of money to pay the bills and it gives us access to that discretionary spending fund money, I call it often, which we can then spend guilt-free and worry-free. And being able to do that goes a very long way towards making you magnetic to more. So you can start to really attract more money in, which of course gives you more fund money, more money to cover all the bills and more money to be able to save. So let me know in the comments below, is this something you've got in place? Have you got separation between discretionary spending and fixed expenses so that you know that when you're spending that discretionary spending money, you're not you know, inadvertently using money that you're going to need to be able to pay the power bill when it comes. Having the separation really gives you the ability to spend money guilt-free, to enjoy spending that discretionary money as you spend it. And that goes a very long way towards your peace of mind and being able to not feel guilty or worried about spending money, which really raises your vibration and helps you become magnetic to more money. It also means that your savings money has been quarantined as well. And so, you know, you've got this pool of fun money and you know by spending it, not impacting the plan. And if you're sitting there thinking, what fun money, Miriam? I don't even know what you're talking about. All my money goes on bills. That's why I'm watching this one because I want to figure out how to be able to save out of all of that. If that's what's running through your mind right now, then I really encourage you to watch this episode next, which will pop up at the end so you can click straight through. Because in that one, we're going to talk about why it's so important to get a money system in place sooner rather than later, especially when you feel like it's all going on bills. Now, I mentioned having a business or a side hustle before, because of course, the cool thing is that gives you the ability to bring in extra income really an unlimited amount to allow you to cover all the bills, make sure you get ahead and start really saving money and ticking off those financial goals. But how much do you need? Well, you need to know that. You need to be able to calculate that. And that's why the Magnetic Money Planner, which is what we use to set up all your money systems so that you can start moving forward and ticking off those financial goals. That's why the planner includes handy little calculators like this one. You know, this calculator is literally called how much does my business need to make? And you can do this yourself if you're reasonably savvy with maths, but you kind of need to know, okay, this is how much my business needs in order to operate. And let's just make up some numbers and let's pretend it's weekly and it's $500 is what my business needs. And then you need to know, well, does my business need to put aside some tax money? And let's say the answer is yes, and we're going to call it 10% of gross income. And your business wants to pay you, like you're starting this business because you want it to pay you, let's say, $1,000 a week. So this kind of calculator and this kind of calculation that you can obviously do yourself if you don't have access to the planner allows you to work out what your gross business income needs to be. So in this example I've given you, you can see that, okay, my business is going to need to bring in, isn't that a fun number, $1,666.67, all the sixes, um, if I want it to pay me $1,000 a week, if it needs $500 a week to operate, and if I'm going to put 10% of my gross business income aside to cover my tax bill. So these are just random numbers I made up on the spot for you. But you need to be able to calculate 
well, how much money do I want my business to generate and pay me? And, you know, what does that mean in terms of gross income my business is going to need to bring in? And that then helps you set goals and targets and business plan. So that right there is the third step you're going to need to take if you feel like you're not making enough money to be able to save money. You're going to need to calculate what is my gap? What is that target income that I'm shooting for from my side hustle or my business? And then you can get a side hustle, change your side hustle, adjust your side hustle, or tweak your business plan to ensure that you're able to generate that amount of income. And if you're chafing at the bit and ready to get into it, then click the link in the description below to check out the Magnetic Money System Bootcamp, because that's where I take you by the hand and we go step by step through the entire magnetic process to help you set up your money system, start eliminating debt, calculate what those gaps in your income might be and help you make a plan to close them and also smooth any irregular cash flow. Really, we do it all, especially if you also have some irregular income. It's a wonderful process to go through because it takes care of everything. Now, if you just want to calculate what that gap in income might be, and what that means for you in terms of you know, top level income, then start by just grabbing my free income target calculator. It's pretty much what I just showed you and you can access it for free right now. The link for that is also in the description below. So what's your biggest takeaway and what's your first action step? Type me a comment below and let me know. And of course, I'd love you to hit the like button, click subscribe, share it with any friends who would also benefit from learning what you just learned. And don't forget to go to this episode next, because it's going to take you through the three reasons why you need a money system, especially if you feel like it's all going on bills. This will have you utterly convinced that a money system is the very next step for you. I'll see you over there. Bye for now.